Hi and welcome to this screencast. I am Günther Wilchnik and in this screencast I will show you how you can easily create web services in C++ using the Applied Informatics Remoting Framework. The web service that we are going to build is based on a stock quote service which we have created in our previous screencast, Remoting in 15 minutes. If you are not familiar with the remoting basics, please watch this screencast first before continuing with this one. Here we have our familiar stock quotes class with the remote annotation. To turn this into a web service, we have to add another annotation to this class declaration. Every SOAP web service needs a namespace, so what we have to do is add a namespace declaration to this web service. That's all we have to do to our stock quotes class to turn it into a web service. The next thing we have to do is make a little change to our code generator configuration file. We have to instruct the remoting code generator to also generate a WSDL document for our web service. To do this, we have to add some XML to the configuration file. First we add a schema element, which turns on generation of a WSDL document. Inside the schema element, we add another element that has the same name as our web service, in this case, stack quotes. Finally, we add a service location element which specifies the web address under which the service will be available. So our web service will run on localhost on port number 14480. That's all we have to do. The next step is save the document and run the code generator. We again run the code generator in server mode and pass it the name of our configuration file. And the code generator completed successfully. And we can see that we have actually created a WSDL document. Let's open it. And well, that's our WSDL document. Now, to actually run our web service, we have to make a little change to our server application. So let's open it. And what we have to do basically is uh, to take out the binary transport which we used in the previous example and replace it with the SOAP light transport. So we simply change the include statements to include the SOAP light transport instead of the binary transport. We also change the service port and register the SOAP light transport instead of the binary transport. We also need to set up a SOAP light listener instead of our binary listener. Save this. And now let's build our application. And our server application built successfully, so let's run it. Now that our server is running, let's build our client application. We will build our client application in Java using the NetBeans IDE. So let's create a new project. We will create a simple Java application.
and we will add a new web service client to our application. We need the WSDL document so that NetMeans can create the necessary Java client code. Since our server is already running, we just specify the location of our web service and click Finish. Passing the WSDL was successful and we can now call the web service from the application. We can see that NetBeans has created a new uh, Java package for us, which contains the client code for the web service. I will now add some Java code to invoke the service. So let's build it. And building was successful. So let's run it. And we actually get a quote for the Apple stock. This completes our screencast. Thanks for joining in and goodbye.